After a year of bloodshed, the crisis in Syria has reached a decisive moment. It's estimated that more than 7,500 lives have been lost. The United Nations has declared that Syrian security forces are guilty of crimes against humanity, including the indiscriminate shelling of civilians, the execution of defectors, and the widespread torture of prisoners. Bashar al-Assad is now doing to homes what his father did to Hama. Aerial photographs procured by Human Rights Watch show a city that has been laid to waste by Assad's tanks and artillery. A British photographer who was wounded and evacuated from the city described it as a, quote, a medieval siege and slaughter. The kinds of mass atrocities that NATO intervened in Libya to prevent in Benghazi are now a reality in homes. Indeed, Syria today is the scene of some of the worst state-sponsored violence since Milosevic's war of crimes in the Balkans, or Russia's annihilation of the Chechen city of Grozny. Saudi Arabia and Qatar are calling for arming opposition forces in Syria. The newly elected Kuwaiti parliament has called on their government to do the same. Last week, the Supreme Allied Commander of NATO, Admiral James Stavridis, testified to the Senate Armed Services Committee that providing arms to opposition forces in Syria could help them shift the balance of power against Assad. Most importantly, Syrians themselves are increasingly calling for international military involvement. Providing military assistance to the Free Syrian Army and other opposition groups is necessary, but at this late hour, that alone will not be sufficient to stop the slaughter and save innocent lives. The only realistic way to do so is with foreign air power. Therefore, at the request of the Syrian National Council, the Free Syrian Army, and local coordinating committees inside the country, the United States should lead an international effort to protect key population centers in Syria, especially in the north, through airstrikes on Assad's forces.